Did I stay or did I go? Cool. What's your decision? I stayed because despite Chen Yingsheng taking our money to buy one of his many yachts, there weren't really any good options. Plus, we had a fun exciting squad coming through at Espanol. With Matias Arezzo being sold for big money last season, we brought in Belgian wonder kid keeper David van Handenhoven. Both Juan Soriano and Johan Garcia left for a bit more than 15 million combined. Jorge de Frutos left for 4.5 million, Kadari exited for 4 million, Antonio Blanco set his sights for Lille, Kong Dabia pieced out in January, while many decide to go out on no. I had an initial 16 million to spend before the sales, so Brais Mendes from newly promoted Celta de Vigo arrived as another center midfield option. The only other ins were promising players. That includes Luis Varela, Julio Gonzalez, who was Oviedo's top scorer in their promotion campaign. I barely played him and loaned him out. In January, Hussein Karakush came from Turkish club Gustepe, and we pulled the heist of the century, bringing in 15 year old Ivan on a compensation deal from Malaga. An opening day victory versus Abar was a good omen, until I realized we were playing Atletico Madrid next. Already? It was a great start though, as Oblak no, decided no, to imitate no, Manuel no. Neuer, which went completely wrong, and Hosa cut home an empty net. Atletico Madrid would respond after the half, and Ossiman, who had an absolute unreal goal scoring campaign, equalized with a header in the box. I'll take a draw at their place. You could say that the early bit of the La Liga season had us in a good moment. With Batiste, Getafe, and Deportivo La Coruña defeated, the only blemish was Jovic and Danjuma causing us problems. Labian and Puche cancelled their goals out for a 2-2 draw. Speaking of Puche, let's introduce you to Double P. Or PP for short. PP review! The first half was Mathis Peters, a Cypriot international who came from my academy in the first season and has dominated the third and second divisions of Spanish football. During his dominance, he partnered up with Israel Puche, who, like Labiad, was found years ago dominating the U19s. And like Peters, he dominated the Spanish footballing pyramid and both were ready for the first team. Peters was scoring in the matches mentioned earlier, including a hat trick versus Getafe. Puche was scoring too, but he really showed his ability in the Champions League. Attempt number three in this competition, and of course, this is our group. The odds were against us, and versus Shakhtar, a team that would be the easiest, it was quite the opposite. Despite Alenia scoring first, Davineras would shift the balance towards the Ukrainian club in just 19 minutes. The Europa League GTA meme was already popping up in my head, and we were still losing late in the match. Puche was brought in, and was already threatening with his illustrious pace, yet nothing, until Pedraza became jealous of Double P, wanting to be part of Triple P, Instead, he got sent off, and we immediately scored from a free kick, thanks to this guy. We'll take it. As Shakhtar were distraught with everything that just occurred, Puche would then score not just one, not just two, but three goals in 12 minutes to go along with Brais Mendes' goal in a 6-2 smashing. Smashing became a common occurrence for Shakhtar, and not in the Markiplier sense. Oh god! But they legitimately got obliterated in the group by Inter, and later, us. Speaking of Inter, they embarrassed us in the final UCL group stage match years ago to eliminate us into the Europa League. So when they stepped onto the pitch, I ordered for no mercy. <laughs> oh what the? So Dead were dealt with afterwards, giving us Liverpool at Anfield. With Klopp at Atletico Madrid, their manager was Steven Gerrard, and yes, he finally won a Premier League medal. Yeah, of course. As expected, it didn't start well, with 35-year-old Mo Salah and Rodrigo scoring in the first 18 minutes. But not even 15 minutes later, we sent a ball in behind, and Allison smacked up Laviad for a penalty. Alenia converted it, and by the way, we almost lost him to his 20 million release fee to Chelsea, but now, he's a top runner at the club by a significant margin. A little after the halftime interval, Puche won the ball, soon received it back, found Brais Mendes, who first time volleyed it into the back of the net. That's how it ended, but October wasn't really our month. Ah, oh, come on, man. With two matches left in the month of Spooktober, we had La Liga matches versus Sporting Guillon and Real Madrid. Despite Puche scoring against the former, we ended up losing with a rotated side. Against Real Madrid, it was a nil-nil draw thanks to Thibaut Courtois. That had us in fourth place, but the table all around was tight. Liverpool at home was next, and the start was beautiful. But we win the ball off them. Francis finds Puche. Puche, boom, 1-0, easy. But then I remembered they had Kareem Adeyemi back from injury. Now let's say we were in an alternate universe 
and he was at a club like, I don't know, Leverkusen? Well, whatever his attributes were there, they're a whole lot worse than what I faced. What I'm trying to say is he scored. Don't you fear though, old man Salah made a mistake to give Richards a free cross to Puche for the go-ahead goal. Salah scored five minutes later because Francis was a complete idiot and conceded a pen. After Puche missed this chance, Luis Diaz found space to take the lead for Liverpool. Okay, let's go. Highlight. 72nd minute. Richards. Shutalo. Elenia. Caceres. Finds Labiad. Ale Arnon out. To Labiad. Let's go! 3-3. What a finish. Come on. No way. No way. Oh my god. Gosh, Richards, man, I know you can't jump. The decisions on the pitch by some defenders, and by me not to close up shop, would cost us. Inter would slay us at the San Siro, and despite defeating Shakhtar 8-0 on the final match day, it didn't matter since we were officially eliminated before we stepped onto the pitch. So once again, it's Europa League dreaming. Focusing back on La Liga, we went on a run of a lifetime. A perfect November with convincing wins. Goals from Labiad, Puche, and the returning Braiz Mendes were key. Although in November, it was a dark two days in Madrid for club legends. Real Madrid were down bad in their league positions, and after losing to Celtic, Ancelotti was sacked. He surprisingly lasted over six years, but Real wasn't the only place reminiscing of past success. Across the city, Atletico Madrid were in a similar position. They were on a bad run of form, losing to Leeds twice, and their mega-rich owner had enough, and sacked Jurgen Klopp a day after Ancelotti. Marcelo Gallardo came in for Atletico, and he had a good start for his new club, but the same cannot be said about Real Madrid's guy. Back to us, in December, we weren't necessarily crushing it, but a late banger from Francis versus Mallorca gave us a win there. Osasuna was frustrating, as we played against 10 men for basically the entire match. They parked it and were nearly successful, but Alberto Malera was found off a free kick and won us the game late. We found ourselves in first place, as Barcelona were beginning to struggle. They were next in the Calen Derby, and with a score even at one apiece, Raiz Rooney in behind Plozek. All around the keeper! Let's go, Rooney, with the assist, let's go! We haven't shown anything in this half, and we did it! Let's go! Valencia afterwards was odd, because I saw two things that have not had occurred to me in FM this year. Not only did I see them get a player sent off with two yellows in the first nine minutes, but after taking the lead with Brais, Alenia had a free kick in the 51st minute. Free kick, Alenia. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Oh my goodness, what happened there? Cheers, Johan. That confirmed the Manager of the Month award for yours truly. In January, the Spanish Super Cup returned to Spain, and once again, it would be Real Madrid. The score was tied with Flozek and Tammy exchanging goals, but as the game was going on, I didn't want to go to extra time, so I took our 4 triple 2 to either win it or lose it. We lost. But that was a blessing in disguise, not because of Zidane getting sacked a couple weeks later since he could barely win a match in La Liga. No, no, no. More so due to the fact that Atletico Madrid won 120 minutes with Barcelona, but in the Super Cup final, they won 120 minutes again where they won the mentioned Super Cup. However, they played us three days later in the league. While Gallardo's side were on fire winning every single game bar one with him, our match was all evens with the dominant Aussie man scoring for them and Labiad for us. A quarter of an hour after halftime, we won a controversial penalty, which Alenia slotted home, handing us another victory in the league. Yeah, we get smashed by them in the Copa del Rey quarterfinals 3-0, but I could care less because our amazing form in La Liga continued. January gave us 5 victories, including Labiat saving our bacon against Abar in Granada, that confirmed another Manager of the Month award for yours truly. February would have me receive a third straight managerial trophy, as Villarreal were defeated. Getafe had a shook being down 2-0 with 40 to go, but an incredible comeback involving Puche, Flozek, and Labiad gave us a 3-2 win. Deportivo saw our man from Turkey destroy their net, and Bilbao couldn't handle Puche for about 2 minutes. The winning run went all the way to 17 matches, as Sporting Gijon were defeated 3-0. With 10 fixtures to go, we were 14 points clear of Atletico Madrid, and it would have to take a monumental collapse not see it out. But first, in the round of 32, Porto would arrive and lose the first leg 3-1. While they made things interesting in the second leg with Mamadou B.I.'s goal, they couldn't find another and were eliminated. In the round of 16, we faced a former team. This whole adventure began as I was sacked after 90 days with Leverkusen, so wouldn't it be fitting to finally face them in this safe? I had a point to prove, 
not just to the fans, or the Twitch chat saying crew out, but to myself. And we did just that with an emphatic 3-0 victory. Leverkusen would make it interesting. In just 18 minutes, they cut the aggregate down to 3-2, but we had one half of double P coming off the bench. Okay, good block, counter attack, let's go. Counter, counter, counter. Go. Puche. Oh my. Puche, to seal the deal. He seals the deal. Israel Puche. Leverkusen down and out. They scored a third. But it wasn't enough, as the second best team in the Bundesliga were defeated. How fitting. The quarterfinals weren't getting easier. This time, it was Borussia Dortmund. The first half of leg one at Signal Iduna Park led to nothing. But that wouldn't stop Alberto Molero from introducing himself with a great strike into the bottom corner. Unfortunately, slow Jonas win would get behind Shutalo and equalize. In spite of this being a decent result, we had one more chance. Can we find a go-ahead goal to take the advantage going into our home, home tie of this leg? Wule. Oh my gosh, he has actually done it. Wule has scored for Espanyol. Incredible scenes. At 36 years of age, he may not play as much anymore, but he at least gave that. The home fixture at our place was a snooze fest, meaning we advanced to the semi-finals of the Europa League for the very first time. The final obstacle before facing the impossible final of Manchester City. How the hell did they get there? It'd be another German opponent, Borussia Mönchengladbach. They finished fifth in the Bundesliga, so you'd expect us to be able to overcome them. However, with chances from both sides, nothing was scratching the surface, although Koruna Riga got sent off late. And with the clock past stoppage time, we had a throw in. Oh, last highlight before the game ends. Flozek across. Peter scores! Let's go! So at Borussia Park, one match was between us and losing to Manchester City in the final. Thank goodness for a late goal though, as the most Spanish sounding name Richard Smith scored in the 27th minute. Soon after, Omar Richards, who was having an incredible campaign, got injured. Still, the tie was close, and only a mistake was going to separate us. When that please don't let Timo Werner score on I'm headed I think Timo actually scoring from outside the box confused many and he clearly confused Shutalo who thought let's just do put Timo in the box this stupid son of a bitch what are you oh my gosh and despite scoring late we lost it was a bittersweet ending and maybe Labiad being injured was a reason for this but on the positive there was La Liga while our winning run ended with several draws, including Sociedad, Real Madrid, Sevilla, and a loss to Celta de Vigo, that still wasn't enough for us to drop from our position. On match day 35, a draw was all that we needed, and the other half of PP, Mathis Peters, scored a brace as we confirmed our league title with Roule lifting the trophy. A first ever La Liga for a club that was founded in 1900 and had seen their Catalonian rivals win 5 Champions Leagues and 28 La Ligas, so it'd be fitting that we played them on the final match day where they had to give us a guard of honor. Poetic. And with the transfer budget given, I do think it's not like there's a universe out there where Espanol actually got an owner willing to spend money on the club. 